on, Wolfpack Nation. Thank you so much for tuning in here for part two of here of our interview here with NC State Sailing Team. That's right, the NC State Sailing Team, world-renowned NC State Sailing Team. So if you haven't seen part one yet, make sure to go check that out first. That is a must, must do. And again, come and then come back here as we continue this conversation here. As now we'll talk more about uh, how the national champion national championship actually works but also too i want to kind of talk a little bit in terms of uh with olivia and isa with because uh, obviously last year we had olivia and scott but obviously we got a different olivia now so so uh we'll start off with that so olivia so uh, we were talking offline that i saw on your shirt it's state engineering so me as a chemical engineering major i gotta ask you what are you studying and how's it going And I have a minor in, in bio, bio manufacturing. Um, okay. That's rough. <laughs> there's, a lot of there's a lot of brains. Uh, yes. I can barely spell half of those words. Um, I say, I mean, it's going pretty good. I'm, I'm officially a junior now. Cool. Um, kind of scared to talk about that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I should say, like, one of the reasons I came to state was sailing and engineering, and both have delivered on many levels. So, I mean, Go back. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you from North Carolina originally? Um, no, I'm from Maryland. Oh, cool. Oh, where at? Um, Southern Maryland, about hour and a half south of Annapolis. Hollywood. Okay, give me. The, I know Hollywood. Yeah, down by Lesby and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 go ahead. I, you know, where are you from? And they'd say, like, Greensboro. And I'm like, what? Yep. <laughs> Where's that? I was like, point in the direction. Yeah. So people ask me where I'm from, like mm-hmm. Maryland, and then some people be like, "Okay, Baltimore, got it, in. cool." Get a little closer and closer until you're finally there. Yeah, so. we've all been. To, uh, we've all so been real to quick, with Maryland, we got a chance to compete this year at St. Mary's <laughs> uh, for a women's regatta and get to see the, yep. the community that raised Olivia Aww. into the fierce competitive athlete she is. There's dinosaurs on the roadside. <laughs> I love it. I, I I dated a girl from Hollywood, so that's why I know. There you so. go. There you go. I lived in PG County go. for, for okay. a few years, so. Right. So so there now, Issa. All right, moving on. Over to you. So, so what are you studying, and how's it going? So I'm a mechanical engineer. It's, it's going, you know. We're Damn. getting through it. I mean, it's, it's difficult, but, yeah, I mean, pretty much exactly what Olivia said. I came here for – Sailing and engineering, and it's delivering. I mean, spot on. See, um, I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, yeah. so out of state situation. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm really happy here, and it's a great situation. See, you and, and you know you go talking to two of our sorry, you're talking to two of our student athletes from really some of the the, the hotbeds of of scholastic high school sailing. You know, the program that Olivia is coming out of in Maryland. Uh, and Issa down in Florida, these are the places that we're starting to get attention from potential, you know, recruits. Yep. Uh, and I think they're just a good illustration of that as well. Yep. Now, go ahead. So did you guys actually seek out NC State for, for sailing? Like, like you were like, okay, uh, sailing. Um, I'm pretty sure NC State has a program. Like, how did you find NC State or did they find uh, so there's you? There's a couple programs that – yeah, well, first I narrowed down engineering schools, and then um, actually Scott Harris from last podcast he let me know that he went here and said, "Hey, talk to this coach. You know, we'd love me. to have you." And so I talked to this. Guy, <laughs> He's like he, me, me. I, yeah. yeah, it was a recruit <laughs> situation, and I'm very thankful. Um, so connections go a long way for recruiting. Good. When uh, when Issa came to visit on, on a recruiting tour, uh, we had practice was canceled by weather, like very much like this, uh, but the weather kind of held and we ended up playing a team basketball. And so her first <laughs> visit to NC State was, uh, we learned that none of us are very good at basketball, uh, but that it turns out we're, we're all pretty good at sailing. Well, that, that's the important thing. That's the important thing. And, 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 and uh, you know, Issa, obviously one of the things I got to say is, is, Golly, you like you must have you must have had a heck of a resume coming up high school because one thing I know is mechanical engineering is no joke to get into. It is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly tough to get into mechanical engineering. Now, me and me and Olivia, we're like, dude, chemical engineering is like, if you want to take on the challenge to get engineer chemical engineering degree, then 
by all means. Like that, that was one of the biggest reasons, honestly, why I went into chemical engineering was because it had the lowest GPA requirement. And I was like, oh, I'll go there and come to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're like, they're like, they're, they're like, hey, I, well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's, it's a tough engineering, let me tell you. So, uh, but so has a. The one that brought it down the point zero five. I mean, <laughs> Olivia over here, she got the great, great no. mechanical. No, bit. hats off to you both. Honestly, though, that that's amazing, and again, congratulations to y'all, and definitely keep it rolling. You know for sure, and uh, it'll it'll come a long way. Hey, if you could walk out here with a national championship and then an engineering degree from NC State, that's uh, that's pretty good. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's pretty that's good. good. That's good. That's a good one so, too. So, so now talking a little bit about the national championship here. So, I. Uh, so I remember the graphic. So basically, you had eighteen teams for the semifinal uh, for, for each. So, yeah. so like, how does the format work? How many teams make it? And like, is it kind of like a bracket per se? Like, kind of walk us through the format. Sure. You want to start? Well, you can go ahead. Um, so in there's two two fleet race national tam- championship regattas. Mm-hmm. You had co-ed uh, and then women's, and the set structure of both is similar. So there's 32 teams that are going to go to the semifinals in co-ed, 32 teams in women's. There's a two-day event, and at the end of those two days, from those two regattas in women's and two regattas in co-eds, the Eastern and Western semifinals, the top nine from each of those will then fold into the top 18 for finals. A uh, unique thing last year with COVID is there were only the finals. So when we qualified in to the top 18 that was directly into finals there were no semifinals last year Mm. so this year into semifinals looking to qualify into day three and day four of the regatta uh and push ourselves as high as we can you know towards that title um Mm -hmm. that's that's the way that that regatta is structured so two days of sailing on semifinals in two 18 boat fleets and then two more days of the combined best of uh, in that one eighteen boat fleet. Okay. So, so when you when you when you when you do that, when you have those 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 regattas, is there a seating structure, or is it just you know the top eighteen are in there, and then they just go at it, and then you just ha- the best boat prevails. Sure. Type so thing. there's seating, and when they you know announce berths, they're seating. But on the start line, there's no seating. You've got eighteen teams okay. all on the start line in a race. Uh, very much like a track race, like a track event. You know, every school has one entry, and you are going to run a bunch of races. And the low score over the lifespan of that event, one or two day event, you know, if you have the lowest average finish, basically, uh, you you win the regatta, and that's how it's it's placed. So it's like track, but with golf scoring is always the way we describe. Hmm. It. Interesting. Yep. Along yep. with the seating, I think what's interesting, so at Regattas, you have two two fleets. You have an A fleet and a B fleet, so two different boats, and sometimes they're sailing at the same time, or sometimes they alternate races with the fleets, um, but what happens with the seating is everyone has conditions that they preference, like maybe they want more wind or lighter wind, and so all these teams have preferences or maybe some of them are good at all, all types of wind. And that's how, you know, they work their way up the natural seating, but you can see you, you don't know your wind basically going in until maybe like a week and a half out. And it's still iffy at that point, but you can tell there are certain teams that are better in different conditions. And yeah, it's, it's kind of hit or miss what you're going to see. So that's crazy. Yeah. You know, we sail in Charleston, Charleston Harbor has a ton of current. And so there's a natural advantage of being familiar with that venue that a team like the College of Charleston, it's their home venue and they're they're pretty good at it. We sail there enough that we're pretty good at it. And that's a natural advantage. Lake-based schools, you know, being able to deal with squirrely conditions where the wind changes like 180 degrees in, in the middle of a race. Uh, you know, our lake puts us in a good position to go up and compete on the Charles River where there's similar situation like that. Mm. So conditions are a big part of that. Um, how it works itself out to the natural seeding. Oh, this is, yeah, this is, it's like a mind blowing moment right here. It's like, God, there's, I, I can't believe how much that goes into this. This is crazy. Uh, 
I got. Okay. I have a ton of questions about this. Keep this going. Bring them on. We love talking right. about it. So, so you, so, so the race course is it a is it a straight shot? Is it like laps? Is it you know? Do they put just buoys out there and you know you do different turns and all that based so you can catch different winds and currents? Like I'm a yes. navy guy, so this is all, all what of those things you said. Yes. It, so. so yeah, basically, okay. typically it's um, two full laps around. So they have the buoys set up, um, and then one buoy is basically straight into the wind, and then you have two buoys far back and that's your starting line. So they have a boat that is with a timer, like a speaker timer. So it's counting down to all the teams, um, a three minute usually. And so then all the teams are off and you go up and down the course twice. Or well, I guess two full laps. So four up and down, but. Yeah. And you do a bunch of those over the course of like a two day regatta, you could run 14 to 18 of races in each division. So, you know, double that, uh, you know, 30 something races, 20, 30 something races, uh, a lot of shorter races, about 15 to 20 minutes each race. Wow. Yeah. Everything you're doing in the one fleet, like a, you have to do in B fleet. So yeah. it's, yeah. yeah. And, and Greg, the Navy guy will appreciate, you know, it's a windward lured course. There's an offset. There's an offset yep. from the windward mark to another mark that you have to go around to offset for current when there is current. So when we have a lake venue, we don't often use an offset, but in current you definitely do. So mm -hmm. those are our big factors. And sailing's a great sport. You know, the the, the, the statement about the, the playing field is always different. Mm -hmm. it is very true in sailing. Wow. Uh, so, so let me ask you this too. So, uh, you know, obviously one of the things that you see a lot with, with, with sports in general is that, that, Great teams always watch film. They always watch themselves back, find their mistakes, learn from them per se. So I guess two questions which I have is obviously, I mean, you coach obviously can't be on the boat necessarily with them as they're going. So, so like, like, do you like, are you like in a separate boat, like beside them where you can like coach them as you go? And then second of all is like, do you actually like record yourself? Cause I know, I remember if I remember correctly, you guys have meetings typically on Thursdays. And uh, so, yeah. so do you, so do you watch like film, like as a team and learn, like kind of talk about that, like kind of like self-development per se. Sure. Yeah. You know, they're out there on the water at practice, two people in a boat. We've got, you know, 14 to 18 boats on the water to practice. And um, you know, I'm generally either coaching or working with people on boat handling or I will be filming and I'll try and take as much footage as I can of really everyone on the team from our best sailors to some of the more developmental sailors. And we watch, we watch film and practice. And I love being able to turn over to my student leaders with a lot more experience and really talk to their peers, coach their peers through some of that video footage. And I'll let you guys talk a little bit about what we do in practice on Thursday nights. Yeah. So we hold weekly presentations on Thursday that, we kind of, Issa and I put together and Dana helps us through it. Um, and we take a lot of time to have videos from practice, like Dana was saying, and we'll watch the video. We'll talk about it with the team. We'll have some more experienced people talk through what they're seeing. And then you can be open up to questions from some of the newer sailors so that they can watch this video. And sometimes it'll be someone doing a really good thing, or sometimes it'll be someone doing a really bad job. Mm. Um, <laughs> That's okay. But we're opening it up to the team. Mm -hmm. it's it's part it of it. so we're talking about what's going on and i think it's been really helpful like especially i think this season we've uh kind of put more yeah. time into watching back our videos mm -hmm. um and i think we've seen a lot of the newer people engaging more um and good team development there yeah we have a lot of different levels on the team and with that we have some some of our top sailors we're all from different places like we were saying she's from maryland i'm from florida you know we have people from north carolina sailing in on lakes versus ocean you know so we're getting all of these different experienced people that are able we're all able to come to the front and share what we know and i think our whole team is really receptive to listening to each other yeah. um also along you said with our meetings every week um we plan out like part of our presentation goes towards the venues that we're sailing at. Mm. And we talk about what you're going to experience. Nice. Like, are you going to have current waves? We'll put the forecast up there nice. and anyone that sailed there can add feedback and we'll just go over it with all the teams that are going. And it, 
I mean, it opens up a lot of learning to the team. Nice. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress-Up Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. So you have a you have a two person crew, um, and obviously you know you definitely rely on your crew member because it's just the two of you in the boat. So there's all kinds of things that go into that. Do you typically stick with the same crew member the whole season? Do you get swapped out? Like how does that work? You know, because you obviously you want to have good communication and good team bonding. So talk to me talk to me a little bit about that. Towards the beginning of the season, um, a lot of people are sailing with randomized combinations, trying to figure out who might be the best fit. I mean that goes into who you might talk to the best just to have that vibe going, um, maybe experience level. There's a lot of different factors that might make a good combination. So yeah, I feel like in the beginning of the season, we try different combinations. And then hopefully after, I'd say two to three weeks, we start doing pairings and making sure that people are practicing with the same people. And we're sending just, yeah, just that pair to events. Yeah, and a lot of the pairings will have to do, too, with conditions. You know, we're going to have a group, of, you know, both that's really light, and they're great for light air. But when it's really breezy, we want to bring in someone with a little bit more power crew, uh, you know, to, to keep the boat flat. And and those first few parts of the season are a lot of experimenting. And we still do that during the year, too, start to figure out, all right, someone's in a funk, you know, how do we switch that up? Um one of the things that is we've improved as a program, and I think that this is a level of sophistication um, and quality that programs will, a threshold that they'll get to is we start to have crew on the team that is difference making crew. So it's not necessarily so reliant on skippers and you're just training up crew who can be in the boat. We're having people come in who, who've come in with crew experience and they'll take their skipper and whether their skipper is pretty good or very good or just somewhere along the way, and they're near the front of the fleet because they're making those contributions. Love it. Um, that's the kind of crew, you know, things that we've we've started to have, and then we pair those crew up with some of our better sailors, and, and the, you know, it's exponential the performance that that a, a boat can have. Love it. And and so one thing I remember too um, from last year too is that you were talking about we were talking about like how a lot of people. Or I guess there there are some case scenarios where you have Olympians or you know people who compete with the Team USA uh, you know sailing team uh, you know at 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 that point Rio but uh, you know whatever the last uh, Olympics was that just went by Um, and then they'll come and 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 go against you guys so basically you have Olympians that you're competing against and and one of the things they were saying is that there was this one Olympian that was I think Carlos of Charleston that was re- and you were like oh my gosh that that like she is so so good and so I wanted so that kind of made me curious like so what makes a really good sailor like what like is it communication is it technique is it mental like like what 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 separates a great I, from a good I think I'll say right off the bat and I'll explain because they're really good sailors and they can speak to yeah. it uh, with you know firsthand knowledge yeah. But I think one of the things is an early start. A lot of the people that are coming into college sailing have been sailing for a long time and they've been sailing committed to sailing. They know this is what they want to do and they're driven for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but for real, a real answer, actual good sailors will answer okay. your question now. <laughs> um, I think part of it comes down to being reactive and like when you're practicing for sailing, you're getting ready to come up with a strategy based off of what you see during a race. Cause like I played field hockey in high school. Um, and part of the thing is you can practice because you know, when you take the ball down that field, that there's a high percentage chance that some girl is going to come at you at this specific angle and I can pull this specific move and I can get around mm-hmm. her. Um, but with sailing, every race that you sail is completely different. So you're practicing being able to react to the conditions. So I think what it comes down to as a good sailor is being able to first off move on from the race beforehand. Cause it's also a psychological thing, uh, being able to move on after you have bad, something bad happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then being able to react and notice when the wind is changing and then 
win the race from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Isa, go ahead, please. Oh, no. I mean, the, the only other factors, she was totally right with the psychological factors. But, yeah, there's agility. I mean, basic with the – you see the Olympians training with, you know, gyms. Like, they're, they're practicing in the gym mm-hmm. multiple days a week, you know. Very fit people, no doubt, um, and and they're but they're sailing every day, like practice sailing every day, and and that's how, the only practice you can get is just getting a taste of every single condition out there, because just like she said, it's different every time. You're not getting the same experience. Yeah. Oh. No matter what. I love it. And, and so kind of one like kind of fun question here a little bit here. So so like obviously with communication, again, I mean, it's it's a lot of split seconds. So you want to make sure that your your teammate hears you and, 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 and you know, can immediately jump at it. <laughs> so like one of the things like like is- like makes me curious is like, do you like almost like want to like not say it too loud? So that I mean, just because I mean, like if, if if like maybe like you recognize something earlier than the other team, you don't want the other team to be like, Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. We got to do that too. Like, you know, so I mean, is, is, is that a part of it at all? Yeah. So there's a couple different aspects. Um, there's the, you want to yell at other teams. There's sometimes an intimidation factor where if you yell, Smack yeah, talk, I love instructions it. that they'll be like, Oh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm moving, yeah. you know, so there's that, but then like, just like you said, if you see something that another team might not, you may turn to your person and just kind of, whisper i mean you see different strategies of like pointing and Mm -hmm. it also depends Mm -hmm. on which person in the boat because i think every combination has a different way of doing things there might be one person in the boat that is more comfortable calling the shots depend it doesn't have to be the driver or it doesn't or it will be the driver um but yeah there's one person that might be more comfortable calling the shots or one person that is more comfortable just observing what's going on and letting you know that there's another boat coming towards you and just being descriptive with what's going on. But I think with, you know, the overall surroundings, it's pretty loud out there for the most part, unless it's dead, like dead wind. Um, You can say what you need to say. There's, I mean, there's, there's even times in, you know, like Lisa said, yeah, sometimes you want to yell at the other boat, <laughs> call your rights. Cause you know, you have rights on the course, especially if you're coming from starboard on the upwind, you have rights. Um, and, uh, and there are times when you talk to your competitors that you're both in a bad spot and they might be holding you to the rights and saying, they're going to just take you in the same course. And you're saying, this isn't good for either of us. Let's go. I love it. Uh, and so there's dynamics the race course between teams like that a lot of communication i love it it is weird when so, you come so, into teams that know each ahead. other and sometimes you can find that you're like working against a couple people or you you can kind of find what teams are familiar and work together a little bit you're not supposed to work together but you you just see what teams are talking to each other yeah. and, mm-hmm. and well even personalities come out you yeah. know there's times that there's certain sailors that i know <laughs> i've always coached i said Make friends with that. You know, if you're friends with that sailor on the water or off the water, they're going to give you less of a headache. Uh, and it doesn't hurt to be friends with certain personalities and, you know, on the race course. Mm-hmm. I, love it. I think you can see with a lot of athletes that their personality can be way more intensified uh, when they're doing their job. So yeah, you see like someone you might know on land is your best friend and you'll see them yelling at you <laughs> hey. on, the, on the water. But, hey. I mean, that's just how it exactly. Is. Yeah. So, so, so sailing, um, and I'm going to use this term and I, please don't take it wrong, but is sailing one of those generally sports, um, where there's just like just some, some certain etiquette and all of that, like it's just understood or, is, or could it be compared to like a football or basketball where it can get rough out there? So sailing has what they call the Corinthian spirit. Um, it's the idea that you know, when you're out there, generally cool no one is. There's no, there's no ref generally. Um, sometimes at a higher level events mm-hmm. they'll have judges, but I mean, 99% of the time you're out there, and if there is a collision, if there is something that happens, it's up to you and the people surrounding you to make sure that the person that was wrong um, is held accountable for it. So I think that, um, I mean, you definitely see out on the water like people will hit a mark and. You, you're supposed to do is you do a 360 for that 
Um, and you'll see people who won't spin, but then you'll have the person behind them calling them out. So to a certain degree, yes, I think we, there is like a gentleman's, I, like we said, we call it the Corinthian spirit. Mm. Uh, is it always sure. upheld? No, <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, it's, but you know, and, uh, the Corinthian spirit too is also that, I mean, there is good sportsmanship in our sport and uh, the expectation mm -hmm. when you're on the water that, you know, the first thing is safety. And if you have a boat that's in danger, yeah. you give up your race and you help them. And that happens. Oh, um, man. It's not so much the, um, uh, like, martini glasses type environment. It's 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 competitive and friendly. Um, and it does get rough. And, and one of the things that you see with our boats is there's they're small boats and you use a lot of muscle to move them where you want them to go. And that communicates, you know, a bunch of boats together, 18 boats in a line, uh, you know, 50 foot long starting line. It, it gets it gets tense. Love it. So, so coach, I, I have a fun question. This is an either or. All right. So I'm, I'm only asking you, coach, because I don't think these young ladies are old enough to understand this question. All right. Favorite movie, summer rental or one crazy summer? I, if we don't want to go fa favorite sailing movie, then it no, no, you can't go favorite. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah favorite sailing movie. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going with this. That's yeah. Is Moana yeah. the <laughs> second favorite sailing movie? Because that's inspiring. <laughs> Watch that movie and tell me you don't want to go out and run to do some roll tags. Wow. Uh, and then there's a All great right. movie, a Disney movie from a couple years ago called uh, Morning Light, which was about a bunch of college sailors who then went on to do a Trans-Pacific race. And it has my, like, niche college sailing heroes in it. it you know, uh, dozens of people have seen that movie. Okay. When I when I when you said Disney, I thought you were going Captain Ron. Now, I, for some reason, I thought you were. And going I will Captain tell you, Ron. you know, early in the program, <laughs> Captain Ron might have been a, a more favorite part of the program. Okay, yeah. so. <laughs> Okay, I have uh, so one, I've derailed one more kind this, of fun so question ahead, to kind of wrap, wrap this thing up here, you know, because again, we're just having too much fun, even though we're over time here. But uh, so, like in in sailing, so I'll ask you, Olivia Nisa, since uh, since since Greg called Coach Dana, I'll call I'll call you both out. So so is sailing one of those sports mm -hmm. like because like with hockey, for example, like I might have like if I'm a huge if I play hockey, love hockey, I might have like a a Wayne Gretzky picture. I might have a like a Martin Brodeur picture, like, you know, on my wall, like, oh my gosh, like those guys are amazing. So like, like in sailing, do you kind of have that as well? Like, oh my gosh, like these athletes are like the bomb. Like, I want to be like them kind of per se. Like, is, is that a thing in sailing? I'm sure it is, but I mean, just, I'm not sure. Like I, I can't, I, I couldn't name a sailing person. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but you know, I don't know. I'm sorry. Well, okay, I know, I'm sorry. I'm being honest with you here. Uh for me personally, um, there's a woman who competed for Team USA um, for the 470s. Um, she is currently uh, active on the Coast Guard, um, and she like got them to just say, okay, well, you can Coast Guard and you can sail. Um, I think that she is so inspiring because she is so freaking strong. Like the lady literally has like an eight pack. Like she is <laughs> insane. And I follow her on Instagram and she's like sailing every day. And it's like, if I could have another life and <laughs> that Not chemical engineering involved, right? Like yeah. that would be the <laughs> life. So. I love it. it. Yeah. I think you run into a lot of people that look up to, um, almost like you get into different boats once you graduate out of college sailing and then you kind of gain mentors in those other boats because once you get out of college sailing, they, they stick to their boat for the rest of their lifetime. And so they spend their time just perfecting what they do. And, and you run into people that are so dedicated, have written books on the proper way to set up your boat and just all those details. Love it. There's a lot of people that look up to them. I wouldn't say maybe posters in people's rooms, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. No, absolutely. One of the things about, one of the things about the kind of heroes in sailing is um, they're gen they're accessible. I feel like I've been at. I mean, I, I coach against uh, the first the woman to win an Olympic medal for the United States in sailing. Uh, you know, if if I didn't, I mean, I'm underqualified as it is, but that just highlights it. Um, you know, you get to meet some of these athletes, student athletes that were in uh, college sailing, yeah. 
because it's a bit a major experience and feeder um, for Olympic sailing. And but like I know you guys have trained with athletes that are training for and are competing in the Olympics. Amazing. Um, they're like an accessible type hero. That's awesome. I love it. So so just kind of wrap this thing up here. So I just want to kind of you guys kind of highlight. So so when is the national championships? How can fans keep up? I just kind of give like just kind of a overall like you know when is it? What is it? How is it? All that jazz. You guys want to start? We have May 18th. Hold on. Make sure we get it. So May. <laughs> yeah. So we start off with uh, co-ed or what's called open uh, fleet race nationals. That starts on Thursday, uh, May the 19th and 20th for the semifinals, 21st and 22nd for finals. And we, we're really pushing to make that final berth or that final round. Okay. And then the women start up that Monday uh, following, which is the 23rd and 24th. Okay. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, they sail semifinals and uh, finals the next two days thereafter, all on Lake Pontchartrain, uh, hosted by Tulane University right there in New Orleans okay. at the uh, Southern Yacht Club and uh, Community Sailing of New Orleans. That's the site that's hosting it this okay. year. And real quick, where did you guys finish last year? We at finished Nationals? 17th. For the, for the Open? 17th. Okay. Three All right, so we're trying to go 15, top 15 or better this year. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you all so much again for joining us. This was awesome. I, I, I mean, I know we really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm sure our viewers did as well. But I mean, definitely, I'm sure just like the viewers who are who are listening slash watching right now would say this, and I'll say it on their behalf. But I mean, keep killing it, y'all. I mean, this is this has been awesome. It's so exciting to see uh, where just this team is going alongside where Pack Athletics is going overall in general. So keep killing it, and definitely, I mean, we 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 support y'all 100 percent all the way, and. Uh, Again, big fans here. So, uh, so, but thank you all for your time. Really do appreciate it. Thank yeah, thanks you. So Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, talk. Well, so make sure as well, make sure as well, Wolfpack Nation to go there. There's the SailPack website, SailPack.org, and go donate theirs. Again, they only get a little bit of pocket, a uh, little bit of, of money support, but then most other support comes from fundraising. So make sure if you don't mind, any penny you can afford, go send it their way so that way you can help them with their trip to nationals here. And uh, it, it would be much, much appreciated. I, I, I can I know that for a fact. But And also, too, to go give them a follow as well on Twitter and instagram as well uh so so make sure you go do that and support them 100 percent. they deserve it they work just as hard as any other team does and they definitely deserve the, the respect of wolfpack nation no doubt about it so uh so thank you all again so much for tuning again uh once again make sure again hit that subscribe button it's, it's free to do it and make sure that you're notified whenever we release new nc state content uh give this uh, video a like if you don't mind as well so that way more nc state fans can see this this video and also to give us a follow at toughy talk now on twitter or instagram uh so that way you stay up to date on all things NC State and all things Tuffy Talk as well. But hey, as always, y'all, go pack, y'all. We'll see y'all soon. Back. Back. Woo! Back.